point for you, but you will notice that the prevalence of cryptokinism in the low level exposed group is below the national average. Uh, it's quite considerably uh, below that. So this result is not very strongly indicating that we have a problem here, but we cannot exclude it. Okay, next slide, please. So, still, uh, this study uh, did not really solve the problem as we had hoped for because uh, of this last finding, because of uh, still limited uh, study size. We are facing the problems in many, many studies of this size, the heterogeneous exposure we have. Uh, and still, uh, even we got, uh, we, we put a lot of efforts into that uh, exposure assessment was without measurements and prior group. Okay, next slide, please. So to conclude, uh, we can say with confidence that the, the, the results of the alarming small study that we that initiated this study was not really uh, corroborated. Uh, we did not find indications in general that the prevalence of the cryptogenism, some of sorts of gardens in Denmark is increased. But unfortunately, we cannot rule out that exposure to pesticides in subsets uh, of gardeners with very specific exposures may carry a uh, risk. Next slide, please. So, uh, the people who undertook this study uh, are listed here. All these people are from my former workplace uh, at uh, Aarhus University. Now, now I am at Copenhagen University. Unfortunately, no, but no, none of these could make it to Taipei. And then I only need to say the last slide. Please, thank you very much for your attention and for the opportunity to talk to you from long distance away. Thank you very much. Yes, hello. Uh, just a uh, happy question regarding the statistical uh, analysis for the uh, adjustment for the gestational age. And I was wondering that what is the reason for adjusting for this much gestational age? We know that gestational age is not uh, a risk factor, risk factor for the, this disease. Uh, just to, want to know more about the, this part of this study. Yes, gestational age. Why we why why are you adjusted for gestational? Yes. 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 We adjusted for gestational age because, uh, as you know, uh, if a baby, a male baby, is born before term, uh, the risk for, uh, or the, the chance to, to have a, uh, to have cryptorganism is much increased because, I mean, the, the, the testis is descending uh, during uh, the last part of the pregnancy. So if the child is born uh, preterm, uh, there would be many more with the, with the cryptorganism testis. So you need to adjust to that. But I should say that that in this uh, analysis we did here, it did not really change uh, anything because the prevalence of preterm births was much the same in female gardeners as in the reference group. So it, it does need, it does not really uh, change the findings. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you for your question. Good morning, Nell. Good morning. Good morning, Nell. Um, I have a question about your uh, diagnosis of cryptorganism. Uh, of course, as you know, it changes a lot, like in the first maybe three or six months after birth. So, um, the, were the, you also said something about using uh, um, the uh, information about operations on cryptorganism. So, what did you finally uh, use? And was it the same for your exposed and your non-exposed group? Yes. I mean, uh, th th that's, that's, an important, uh, that's an important issue to raise here, I think, uh, the, the question about diagnosis and when you do the diagnosis. You know, let me answer that. You have two questions now. Uh, and, and to answer the first one, when, when uh, were these boys diagnosed? Um, most were diagnosed at birth, but uh, we uh, had boys that were diagnosed up to 10 years of age. Uh, so, so, I mean, we, we have been following these uh, children uh, uh, as long as possible in the registries. And some 
voice uh, only come to, to uh, diagnosis uh, at a later age. So, considering the question about objectomy, uh, we uh, did analysis, of course, separately uh, on, on these, and we essentially have the same findings, and this is the reason I don't um, show them in, in these slides. Uh, we, we have uh, we have essentially the same findings when we analyze uh, the boys that have been there, uh, that have had surgery for this condition. And when you, you said you followed this, uh, these boys up for a longer time period, but when they were in the registry as having cuprogism at birth, uh, did you adjust it when it, they had spontaneous descent, like within the first few months? Uh, yes, we did. I think, yes, yeah, we did. Yes, we did. Okay. Thank you for your easy uh, speech. I think, uh, how do you suggest about the, uh, on the uh, any medicine or any cure of this cryptocurrency that was developed in a, a newborn baby or female gardener? Su suggest any medicine? I have difficulties hearing what you tell. I, I, I cannot really hear. Could, could you please repeat or could you... Uh... What I'm saying that, did you suggest any medicine? Is there any... Any medicine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For this case. Any medicine? Yeah, 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 yeah. If it has happened, um, so will you suggest any medicine? Um, okay, then this I, I, I'm not um, I'm not an expert on in, in on that, but I think that, I mean the, the, the normal treatment yeah. in Denmark is to uh, correct the anomaly with the surgery. Uh, I don't Sorry. think. Um, but, but I, I, I must admit, uh, I'm not a pediatrician, I, I don't know really uh, if um, there's any possibilities for, for treatment with the particular medicines, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I lost the picture, but I cannot see you anymore. Ms. <laughs> Nicola Cherry, I can see you. Um, okay, then. Obviously one of the problems is you don't really know what pesticides they were using. They said. Uh, yeah. In the, I'm sorry, I don't know the previous study. Did they, in fact, were they able to identify uh, a particular pesticide that was associated with this, or did the previous study also simply have use of pesticides? Yes. Um, the previous study, uh, they did identify uh, exactly the types of pesticides that were used. But, uh, the, I mean, it didn't really help a lot because the many different types of pesticides were used. So uh, it was not, uh, in this uh, earlier study, possible to, uh, to do analysis on some specific pesticides. But at least uh, there were a description of all the types of pesticides. But it didn't help really. I mean, there was not a common denominator uh, looking at uh, the few cases with cryptocurrency in, 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 in this time. But then uh, there was another approach which I think is interesting and which has also been published by this group, namely to look for uh, endocrine activities in blood um, uh, induced by whatever type of pesticide. So, so you, you, you use um, uh, external um, endocrine activity that can be measured by some methods in blood as a, an exposure measure. Uh, but as far as I know, they, they, these people have not been analyzing uh, this, uh, the, the risk of cryptoculism according to, to uh, levels of uh, estrogenic or anti-estrogenic anti or anti-androgenic activity in blood. But I think, I mean, the issue you raised, uh, we have discussed this before, um, that's really, that's really uh, the main, a main problem in, in all these studies we are doing now. We need to be specific about the compounds. Thank you. And I mean, maybe I could mention then that, that I, I should have shown that in my presentation, I think, because there is one very 
In Tom's study, uh, performed by Long Nader, published in Environmental Health Perspectives, where they measured uh, DDE, which is an anti antigen uh, in blood of, of the women, uh, in a big study. Uh, and here you would say we should expect uh, uh, in, an increased risk of tryptophilism. Uh, but this big study is negative. But I think it's important, even if it is negative, because this is exactly this one specific compound that is measured in every body and uh, it's anti antigen. Thank you so much, Jens Peter. We will